Hello everyone, how are you? This lecture we are going to discuss anthocyanins part 1. So before we start with our lecture, I would like to go through the learning outcomes of this lecture. So and, uh, at the end of this chapter, you will be able to define anthocyanins, outline the significance of anthocyanins, and also you will be able to outline various examples of anthocyanins, natural distribution of anthocyanins, and you will be able to explain the chemistry of anthocyanins and also you will be able to explain mainly in part 2 the botanical name, family name and of uh, family of plants containing a certain important anthocyanins and anthocyanidin like pelargonidine, cyanidine, delphinidine and malgadine. And at the end of this chapter you will be also able to outline the pharmacological activities of malgadine and explain uh, phytoalexins again a new term for you with certain examples. So first we will start with anthocyanins. Okay. So anthocyanins are the largest and most important group of water soluble pigments that are available in nature and they are mainly responsible for providing blue, purple and red colors to fruits and vegetables. The word anthocyanins mainly derived from the two Greek words where the anthos means flower and kainos means dark blue. So I would like to mention here even though the anthocyanin means the blue color it is also responsible for providing various other colors like purple and red and the color of anthocyanins are mainly dependent on pH or you can say pH dependent which we will discuss in detail under the chemistry of anthocyanins. Now here before I proceed I would like to mention two similar terms where students often get confused. You need to know the difference between the two similar terms. The, here the anthocyanin, it means the glycosides of anthocyanidine. It means anthocyanidine is the name of a glycon part, whereas the anthocyanins are known as glycosides of anthocyanidine. That means when sugar is attached to anthocyanidine, they are known as anthocyanins. So once again, the anthocyanin means glycosides, whereas anthocyanidines means a glycon. So a glycon, when it is attached to sugar, it becomes anthocyanins. So don't get confused with the cyanidine and cyanines. So we'll proceed further. First, we'll discuss with the significance, various significance of anthocyanins. So as you know, we have already discussed and the flavonoids. Anthocyanins are also a class of flavonoids. So one of the major ecological importance they show in nature is by helping in plant pollination, an important process, a step in the process of reproduction and dispersal of seeds because uh, by providing color it, act, it acts as a color attractant, attracting various uh, birds, insects and help in the pollination and dispersal of seed. And not only that, they are also regarded as potential natural colorant in the food chemistry, food industry. So not only they help in the plant pollination, uh, because of their color and uh, combined biological effect, they are also heavily used in food industry. We will discuss again later. And regarding dietary significance, they are also found to be highly antioxidant and anti-inflammatory in nature and they are capable of lowering the risk of cardiovascular disease, diabetes, arthritis and various types of cancer. Now incorporating anthocyanins as food colorants has mainly two benefits. First of all as a colorant not only they improve the appearance of food but they are also very beneficial to the health. So that's why anthocyanins are uh, preferably and heavily, heavily used in the food industry for two benefits. An estimated daily intake of anthocyanins in US is found to be around 12.5 mg per day. Now regarding the major sources of anthocyanin, let us have a look at what are the various sources of anthocyanins. I mean what are the various fruits and vegetables that contain anthocyanins. Mainly anthocyanins are found in heavy quantity in blueberries, cherries, raspberries, strawberries, blackcurrant, purple grapes and red wines. 
Have a look at their pictures. There's a picture of choco berries, blackberries, blueberries, pomegranate even also contain a lot of anthocyanins, palm, cherry, raspberry, then strawberry. In fact, the red wine contains a lot of anthocyanins. Now continuing with the significance of anthocyanins, anthocyanins also play a major role in plant defense system and therefore they help in protecting the plant against various predators like parasites and pathogenic microorganisms but they are found to be less effective as compared to flavonoids. If you remember we discussed in flavonoids, flavonoids also play an important role in the plant defense system but as compared to flavonols group of flavonoids anthocyanins are less effective and most importantly they are not found to be toxic to higher animal species here you would like to uh, uh, understand that anthocyanins protects plant against herbivore and microorganism in various ways two of the way interesting way is they serve in plant camouflage. Plant camouflage means they help in providing a certain types of color which helps the plant to hide itself with the natural color or the surrounding color so that when predators come they cannot recognize the plant as their prey. Another interesting concept is which is opposite to camouflage. They also serve in aposematism. Aposematism, aposematism is a concept of wearing the concept of warning color that means they also provide a kind of color when an insect look at this color from the far away they think like oh it's something warning I should not go it looks like toxic for example of aposematic color like when you walk on the road you may see a lot of vehicles going around you are not so bothered but the moment you see a car coming with the red light on top of the car you know that it is, it is either a police van so you become cautious, you take your car away or either you or you uh, walk little aside. Uh, similarly, when you see an ambulance coming with the red color, it gives a warning symbol, a symbol okay, warning color. Okay. Similarly, when a fire brigade, uh, you know, the bus goes, it also wears a aposematic color. So those colors, color of warning. So anthocyanins also provide a certain kind of color to the plant, which, uh, you know, uh, represent as a warning color. So here the predators recognize plant as a sign of warning. Whereas in case of camouflage, uh, camouflage, the predators are not able to recognize the plant because due to camouflage they are able to hide the plant. And due to aposematism they are not hiding the plant. They are giving a warning signal to the predators or insects that don't come near to me otherwise I will be toxic to you. One of the an, an, another example of epistemotism will be the bright color of this granular poisonous frog, okay, which is uh, signaling a warning to predators, which is a warning signal to predators of its own toxicity. So the bright color of the frog actually is not for beautification; it's a kind of warning signal to the predators or other, you know, the um, the prayers that don't come near to me, otherwise I'm toxic to you. Now coming to chem uh, chemistry of anthocyanidins and anthocyanins, if you look at the structure, they have 15 carbon okay, atoms in their basic skeleton because they are also a class of flavonoids and they are, since they, are, they belong to a class of flavonoids, they are also arranged in C6, C3 and C6, where you can see the C6 and C6, the first and last C6, they are arranged in the form of an mm, uh, aromatic ring both C6, C6 of ring A and B, they are attached to C3, you see 1, 2, 3, okay, which again arranges itself in the form of a ring C. And they are distinguished from flavonoid due to the presence of flavilium ion. If you remember, we discussed in the flavonoid class, they have a flavinium ion where the oxygen of the uh, atom of the ring C contains a positive charge, okay, which is also known as oxonium ion. And as a whole, the structure of anthocyanidine, okay, so look at this, this is the structure of anthocyanidine because it is not attached with any sugar. When it becomes attached with any sugar, it becomes anthocyanin. 
So the structure of anthocyanidin consists of two aromatic rings, that is ring A and ring B, which are linked by a heterocyclic ring C. And about 23 anthocyanidins, that is the glycon without sugars, are found in nature, among which six of them are very important or most common. What are those? First one is pelargonidine, cyanidine, delphinidine, pionidine, piconidine and malvidine. If you look at the difference between them, all of them differ from each other only based on their substitution pattern at ring B, this ring, ring B. So for example, if you look at the structure of pelargonidine, it has only one hydroxyl group, OH group attached at the fourth position of ring B, whereas in case of cyanidine, it has uh, one OH group attached at uh, third position of phenyl, uh, ring B and another OH group at the fourth position. So difference between pelargonidine and cyanidine is the presence of OH group. We can visualize this structure in a better way in the next slide. Now have a look at this, pelargonidine, you can see it has only one hydroxyl group, okay, OH group at the ring B, whereas cyanidine it has two OH group, delphinidine it has three OH group attached to the ring B. When you come to the pionidine, it is methylated, where it has one methoxy group attached to the th third position, whereas pionidine it contains one methoxy and two OH group at the ring B, and malvidine in cocktail it contains two methoxy group, one attached to third position, another attached to uh, fifth position, okay. So you can see all the six of them, they mainly differ in their substitution pattern at ring B, okay. And these six of, these six of them are most important or, more, or in other words, most commonly found in nature. Now continuing with the chemistry of anthocyanins and anthocyanidines, so far more than 500 different anthocyanins are reported. So even though we say only 23 are reported, 23 anthocyanidine. So remember once again I am uh, reminding you, number of egg glycon can be less, but based on one egg glycon there can be many glycosides, that means many anthocyanins, based on the type of the sugar attached, based on the number of the sugar attached, based on the position at which sugars are attached to the anthocyanidine. So one anthocyanidine can be presented in the nature in, in the form of various anthocyanines based on type, number and position of sugar attachment to the anthocyanidine. Okay. So generally anthocyanines are found to be three monoglycosides that is uh, most preferably the most available ones are three monoglycosides if you see the sugar molecule is attached to the third position or as three five diglycoside where the sugar molecule is attached sugar molecules are attached at third position of ring c and fifth position of ring a so these two varieties are most common in nature but it should be noted that even though it is rare the sugar molecule can also attach to the OH groups at third position, uh, third, fourth and fifth position of the ring B. Even though it is rare, but glycosylation of ring B is also possible and available in nature. So if you categorize, three monoglycosides are more highly available compared to three, five diglycosides and three, five diglycosides are more highly available compared to glycosylation at ring B. Now continuing with the chemistry of anthocyanidines and anthocyanines, it should be noted that glycosides of three non-methylated, glycosides of three non-methylated anthocyanides, uh, anthocyanidines are most widespread. So if you remember the six structures of most commonly available anthocyanidine that we have discussed in our previous slide, look at this structure now, okay. Here, what did I say? The glycosides of three non-methylated, non-methylated glucose structures of, that means the pelargonidin three glucoside, cyanidin three glucoside, delphinidin three glucosides, okay. All of them, they don't have any methyl group at the uh, ring B. Whereas if you look at the other three structures, which are methylated, for example, pionidine, it has a methyl group, methoxy group at ring B. Pitunidine, it has a methoxy group also at the ring B. 
and malvidine, which is 2 methoxy group at ring B. So, what did I say? The glycosides of first three varieties, that means non methylated anthocyanidins, are most available and widespread in nature as compared to the methylated varieties. Okay. So, I think I will stop my lecture here today. I will continue again in the part 2. Thank you for your attention.